again, virtually a guy that doesn't contribute in the game unless it's a sack fumble, which is really good, right? That's right. a game changer play. <laughs> but, you know, it's, I need you to do something else. You know? David Ajabo, and I think this guy's gonna be really interesting to talk about because he really only has had success in one season in his college career. So to see that success then transfer into the NFL, it's just black and white. We don't really know what's gonna happen. So I'm interested to see what you guys think. Joe, where, do you, where are you grading this guy? I like David Ajabo. I have a first round grade on him and to me, it's all about betting on traits. And that's something that I've – listen, it's it's a philosophy that I've adapted here as I've learned a lot through not betting on traits and wishing I did, all right? <laughs> Let's be completely honest, all right? And so um, I completely understand the one-year sample size, you know, a guy that's only been playing football for five years, a guy that you don't love against the run right now at all. But my goodness, the quickness – the length, the flexibility, it's all there. And for a guy that is very new to rushing the passer, you see him string together some very unique counters and getting his hands involved and using that length. And so he's not a finished product, but to me he's a perfect target for a team that needs an impact pass rusher, that has a plan for him, and uh, can really utilize his skill set to unleash him because – there's a, a very unique skill set here that I think can turn into an impact pass rusher. Now, expectations maybe need to be tempered for early on. You know, if you're expecting this to be your answer at pass rusher in year one, that might not be the case. But by year, t year two, year three, I think he's going to really be a, a nice return on investment. All right. So I, I think it's appropriate to put the proper expectations on this, right? We're talking about a guy that's probably going to be a top 10 pick. And we've all talked about and discussed as a scouting staff that this guy possibly is only going to be a third down rusher his first year. So once again, we're talking about being a top 10 pick. So this is a guy that we're talking about in the run game. He's not very good. He still has to develop. He has to understand. you, And you can see that he doesn't have the natural instincts yet of playing the run. So he's a guy that when you bring him in, you have to develop. So when we talked, I had concerns about him in the run game. So that's why I gave him a second round grade because I'm like, you know what? He has a high upside, but he shouldn't have that low of a low side neither, in, in my opinion. Um, if he had 12 sacks in a season, I believe, that was the 12 plays that he made. So you're getting virtually a guy that doesn't contribute in the game unless it's a sack fumble, which is really good, right? That's right. a game-changing play. <laughs> but, you know, it's, I need you to do something else, essentially. So that was my take on it. And like I said, I, I like him. I just don't love him for being a top-10 guy. Yeah, so if we're, if we're going to vet through the concerns – with David. It's the one year sample size. It's the play against the run. It's the fact that Aiden Hutchinson's on the other side of the line right. against you and yeah. the attention that he commands. That's a good point. And I think as I, I focus myself on trying to project him forward, I'm more so in line with Joe in this, where I also have a first round valuation on David, and I believe he's my edge four, and he's going to be a top 15 projection for me in, out of this year's entire draft class. He'll be a top 15 player. Um, the instincts that he showcases in the pass rush are very rare for somebody who has only been playing the game for five years. That's the part that jumps out to me. Keith's not wrong. When you watch him play the run, and he plays high from time to time, yeah. he doesn't have a lot of separation consistency for a guy who's as long as he is. You need to see him get better using his hands. And he kind of has that, oh, blank moment where he gets stood up at the point of attack, and it's, I don't know how to get off of this. Block. Speed turn off of it, right? Right. He, <laughs> he, he will take the passive He'll take the passive route to get off of contact, and that's something that needs to really get better. And you watched him in some of the games that they played this year that challenged you with running the football, and you saw that show up. You know, Iowa runs the ball at a high clip. Obviously, Georgia, you know, those two games to close the season for them yeah. in the Big Ten Championship game and in the college football playoff, those were games that I thought accentuated – this primary concern that you have with David as a player. But a guy who's got the speed to power conversion that he has, the guy who's got the flexibility and speed off the edge that he has, the guy who has inside counters, fake spin moves, he's hitting a nice pick on his spin moves yeah, he that he does hit. Those are the little things that from the art of the pass rush perspective, the light bulb is on and it's Brian Burns-esque for me. And we've seen Burns when he first came into the league. He was a designated pass rusher for the Carolina Panthers and he played well, but he couldn't play at a high volume of snaps. 
Okay, so you threw that out there. I'm going to come directly back to right. you. Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to approach this with a couple guys that I know you like, right? So you can take, yep. you have, we talk about perspective in the NFL draft. The NFL draft is not just a one round thing, right? They're second round, third Put round, me on fourth the team. round. Okay, yeah, keep, keep, I'm putting you on the team. I'm setting it up perfectly. Yep. So I throw out the name Boye Mafe. Yep. If I throw out Arnell Ebiketti. If yep. I throw out Jesse Laketa, yep. I know there's three guys that you like in Big Ten I country, do. right? So if you have the opportunity to draft another player in the top 10 and possibly get oh, these guys. My favorite game. In the second round, hit me with my own spiel. Here. There we go. Would you not do that? Because essentially, let's talk about it. In the first one, two, three years, you're essentially getting the same production out of both of those guys. We're talking about being designated pass rushers and. Get but after what's the, the ceiling? What's the ceiling? And that comes back to bet on traits, right? So uh, I do think there is always opportunity cost with choosing a player and the opportunity that they're fit in. But I look at the ceiling of David with having such a small sample size of playing the game. And he's shown he is capable of playing at a high intellect level with how he rushes the passer. And I think he's much more polished as a pass rusher than any of the names that you just mentioned. Uh, Boye Mafe has not had the sack production at Minnesota that you would expect. Now, granted, Minnesota had him dropping into coverage from time to time. Dude's right. 260. Right. He's going to run a 4-5 something, and he's got 34 inch arms. Play him straight ahead, please, right? right? But there's plenty of examples of that in college football where guys are put in roles that their teams need them to fill. For David, I still think that there's the untapped potential plus how nuanced he is as a pass rusher that has me ready to say there's levels that he can tap into that I don't think those other guys can. Okay. I, I didn't mean to cut you off, Joe. I'm, I'm sorry. But I want to throw it to you, too. Okay. When we talk about this. He cause... feels attacked. <laughs> 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 no, because we, we've had the conversation and we talked about teams in the top 10 because that's what we're talking about. We're talking about a yeah. top 10 oh, yeah. prospect. I was so, hoping you did. I don't know yeah, if we I, are I, anymore, I, though. I don't know if we are anymore. Oh, I am. I am. Keep going. So, yes, give it to him. Right. Give it to him. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give this to you. I'm yeah. going to hand this to you on a platter. So what teams would be a good fit for mm-hmm. David Ajabo, a young Edge yeah. rusher who has a high upside but also still needs to be developed. I was hoping you'd ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> about the New York Giants with Wink Martindale. Okay. Thinking about what this man was able to do with Odafe Owe over okay. in Baltimore last year. Guy with zero sacks was last year at Penn State. I'd say, I'm not going to say that Ojabo's got the same burst as, as Owe, who was pretty ridiculous. But o- Owe was a better run defender. Too. Better run defender, but I would say similar in terms of we're not sure this is a super polished pass rusher, but... How about what he did with Matt Judon in Baltimore? Same thing, right? So that, that's why I'm going to the New York Giants as this team where I feel like he's going to know how to get the most out of that player. And, you know, it's that, it's that attack style front. He's going to shoot gaps. They're going to create runways for him to get isolated against running backs and just beat him and get to the quarterback. I think that's a spot where he can have a lot of success. And when you think about the Giants, or they're, five, they're picking five and seven. That's not a great spot to be. You know what I mean? Like most drafts, you'd love that. This is not the draft to love that because they're probably not going to get either of the top two tackles. You know, I don't know that they're going to – they're certainly not going to force a quarterback, let's be honest. And they're going to have to ask themselves questions like, do we want to go for the – third, fourth, fifth offensive tackle potentially? Do we want? Do we have to pick a corner? Are we going to go with the safety like Kyle Hamilton, a spot that we're, you know, we're pretty set at with what we have already on the roster? Or is, is this the type of pass rusher that can come in and create an impact in our scheme, and it's the perfect scheme where we can get value out of him now and allow him to continue growing into a role so that way year two, year three, you know, you're starting to see a more complete player. So to me, that's the, la- the landing spot that I like for him in the top ten. I got, how about Baltimore at 14? I know it's a little bit later, but... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Yeah. so you know where I'm going. Same defensive coordinator that he had last year in his big low up year. Mike McDonald was the linebackers coach at Baltimore, took the D.C. job in Michigan, and then they relieved Wink Martindale and hired Mike McDonald from Michigan to now be the D.C. in Baltimore. So nobody's going to know how to get the best version of David Ajabo better than Mike McDonald who was there for the year that he blew up this past year. And Baltimore does this all the time. They'll sit there on the draft board. They're not picking in the high high picks. And they magically have just some super gifted player that falls directly into their lap. And they're like, oh, well, if you're going to twist our arms, (laughs) we'll go ahead and take this unbelievable value here at this point in the draft. But like, I think Kayvon Thibodeau, Aiden Hutchinson, I think Trayvon Walker has jumped David Ajabo at this point. I think Jermaine Johnson has a chance to have jumped David Ajabo at this point. This could be edge five. 
So I don't think this has to be a guy that's going to, and I agree generally with your point, Joe has the best landing spot out of the top 10 right. for that fit for him. But you know, I wouldn't like him in Atlanta where you know, you've got Grady Jarrett as a penetration guy on the inside, but they desperately need playmakers all over that defense. And if you're going to put him and install him into that, you know, I'm not going to love that. But you know, Baltimore at 14 is another landing spot where I'm, I'm dialed in and I'm like, if he's there and Sauce Gardner's not on the board for Baltimore, who's probably going to have to make a decision on Marcus Peters and transition away from one of their corners, that would be a home run fit for me. So David Ajabo, a very interesting guy. We'll see. He doesn't really have much tape for these coaches to play off of. So it'll be really interesting to see how this transforms into the NFL. And we'll see how he plays at the highest level. <laughs>